Okay, I'd like to introduce Bernard Helen. He is the founder and proprietor of MiniPrints, uh, which can be found at miniprints.ca or miniprints.com. Um, it's a new company, approximately two years old, and was started because Bernard needed an HO scale beaver. Um, he is a member of the NMRA Canada Niagara Frontier Region and models the Genesee and Wyoming Quebec Gatineau Short Line Railroad in HO scale from Montreal to Quebec City. Um, I'll let Bernard finish off his own introduction. Thank you, Jeff. That, that is 100% right. Yes. And it's a pleasure to be with you uh, tonight. Thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. And I've got a, a short presentation, which I'd like to, uh, to fire up in a minute. Uh, but I see some, uh, some friends and some customers here in the room. So I just want to do a little shout out to, uh, to Gerald and David, who both uh, visited my space within the last week. So uh, they, uh, they were, uh, uh, they were recently in uh, the building I'm about to show you. So good to see you. And um, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I welcome questions. Uh, so you can either pop questions into the chat uh, throughout and I'll be, I'll be watching that. Uh, or if I do lose the chat because I'm gonna go into presentation mode, uh, then I'll make sure that there's you know, uh, some time at the end. So if you bear with me for a minute here, I will uh, share my screen. Um, and so if you want to contact me at any time, uh, my email is bernard at miniprints.com. And uh, I'm gonna take you through a little presentation uh, where I will share with you uh, a little bit about myself, uh, how I became an, an accidental model railroad manufacturer. Uh, as Jeff uh, mentioned, this is all within the last uh, couple of years. Uh, show you a little bit about what we do and uh, stay tuned till the end because there is a 15% off discount code uh, specifically for this presentation and this group. So MiniPrints specializes in the 3D printing and creation of miniature things. The minier, the better. I like challenges and I will throw out a challenge to the group uh, throughout this presentation. So the smaller, the better. Uh, it all started and I will talk a little bit about the origin story with the beaver. Uh, but before we go to that part of the story, this is me in Quebec City uh, about seven years ago when I started uh, uh, modeling. I worked for a, a Canadian paper company. I'm a recovering graphic designer. And they had me out uh, talking to other graphic designers uh, representing their paper. And I kind of fell in love with the orange and black because this was the railroad that served uh, our paper mill just about 45 minutes uh, north of Montreal. So uh, this uh, love of uh, Quebec Gatineau turned into a, a basement sized layout in HO scale. Uh, I blog about it infrequently on the miniprints.com uh, website. Uh, I believe the last post was January 2020, so I'm a little behind, but there's a lot of historical information on uh, the layout, including a track plan. And I'm sitting in the layout right now uh, in the basement uh, in a room that's approximately 10 feet by 30 feet. And I model, as Jeff mentioned, uh, Quebec Gatineau uh, from Montreal to Quebec City uh, with a focus on the port of Trois-Rivières. It's proto-freelance in as much as uh, there are uh, prototypical industries. They're not exactly in the right place, but they're close enough. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to uh, replicate a little slice of reality with some artistic license. And this is the layout. This is the room that I'm sitting in right now uh, in varying states of uh, disrepair. Uh, one of the uh, disadvantages of starting a model railroad business is I've turned this layout on twice in the last two years. So uh, we'll talk more about that, but uh, I have some comments. It, it's, uh, don't get me wrong, I love what I'm doing and it, it's a lot of fun, uh, but uh, I haven't had a ton of time to model lately. Uh, but ironically, my journey really starts uh, up here in the uh, upper left-hand side of my layout uh, about four years ago. 
and there's this little pond scene that I was creating. And you can see right in the corner of that pond scene, uh, there's a, a beaver lodge and that's ubiquitous. They are everywhere uh, all throughout North America, but especially up here in Canada. And there was even one, believe it or not, that made its way onto the Toronto uh, subway system uh, a couple of years ago and stopped uh, uh, commuter subway traffic. So yeah, there are more about that if, you, if you're interested. But uh, beaver is the national symbol of Canada. It's on the crest of the CP Rail Company. And would you believe it or not, nobody made an HO scale beaver. I looked at Prizer, I looked at Woodland Scenics, I looked at all the usual suspects. This was about four years ago, and it did not exist. They existed no scale, uh, but they did not exist in HO scale. As a quick aside, I would not recommend Googling HO beaver. Uh, you will have some explaining to do, but that's another story, and they did not exist. So being a recovering graphic designer, I thought, okay, uh, I will create an HO scale beaver. So I had enough, you know, design skills to make myself uh, a little bit dangerous, and I um, created my little sort of 3D printed rough beaver character, and at that point, for four or five years ago, I sent it off to Shapeways. Uh, and about three weeks later, I received a very expensive 3D print of my little beaver and I was able to complete my scene. All of that changed two years ago. And two years ago, I discovered this. This is the original Elegoo Mars printer uh, that I picked up. Uh, I have three of my originals and I, since, picking this machine up two years ago, I'm now up to 10 machines of varying, um, you know, newer machines and varying, you know, iterations. Um, I was not particularly impressed with 3D printing over the years until this machine came out. It's always been something that I was sort of a little bit interested in, uh, but never felt that I needed to make the jump, you know, with the FDM filament style printers, because it didn't offer the sophistication of, of what I was specifically looking for in terms of resolution. Uh, but that changed, and this is a video which may or may not play. If you're seeing it move, that's great. This is resin 3D printing. And resin 3D printing, if you're not familiar with it, is a completely different beast in as much as uh, you are not using a plastic filament that gets uh, melted. You are actually uh, exposing liquid photopolymer resin with UV light. And it yields a very, very, very high resolution detailed print. And I won't go too much into the process now, other than to say for me, it was enough to get me into, into the business, into the 3D world. Uh, so what did this mean? This meant that not only was I able to uh, reprint my own beaver instead of sending it out to Shapeways, but I was able to design variations of my beaver. So I was able to create a standing beaver or a beaver leaning up against a tree or a swimming beaver. So how does my creation of a beaver lead to me sitting here talking to you two years later? Well, I put it on Facebook and I showed everyone what I did and a friend said, can you make me one? And I said, sure. And I made my friend a beaver and I sent it off to him. And then he posted a picture and then more people started saying, hey, can you make me those? And uh, two years ago, so April 1st, 2020, the miniprints.com website went live, which was a happy coincidence because that was exactly the time the pandemic hit my business. And unfortunately my graphic design uh, business went to zero because I was working for a uh, small mom and pop retail stores and it's hard to do graphic design for them when they are not open. So it's that old story about window closing, door opening or vice versa. Uh, I found myself not only as a purveyor of 3D printed beavers on Facebook, 
uh, but it became uh, the core business and uh, my graphic design business became a 3D printing business. So there's the beaver. The beaver ended up on the layout. The beaver ended up uh, chewing a tree. And then of course the beaver lodge uh, needed a satellite dish because yes, that's a thing. Beaver lodges do have satellite dishes. And I put this slide in because everything that I do at Mini Prince is really based upon three things. It has to be unique. It has to fulfill the need to really super detail a layout. So things that are unique and add a level of detail beyond uh, what is typically out there. And most importantly, and as you'll see when I sort of show some of the pictures of the things I create on the website, it has to be fun. Uh, I'm very much a prototypical modeler, but I'm not precious about it. And, you know, I, I think that satellite dishes belong on beaver lodges. Besides being prototypical, uh, I like to have fun with it. So um, mini prints uh, from the beaver led to other animals. Um, I like to call my, you know, in, in the model railroad world, there's, there's ready to ro run cars. Well, my animals are ready to roam. So we 3D print. Uh, and do all the snipping and uh, basically deliver the animal uh, and all you need to do is paint it. So they think of it as sort of craftsman quality. Uh, the only uh, assembly you need to do really is put paint to it. And, and the reason for that is uh, I'm a decent painter but there are a lot better painters out there and everybody has their own interpretation. Of, of how they like these things painted. So, so mini prints come unpainted. That's the fun part. You get to do that. Um, of course, that led to many other animals. All mini prints are available in HO, S, and O scale. So everything you see here that I show you uh, is available in three of the four scales and most are available in N scale. Um, not everything is technically possibly able to be printed in N-scale, uh, but I certainly try and have had decent success. So certainly HOS and O-scale for sure, N-scale where possible. Um, the other thing that's really important to me is uh, I really want people to be happy. This is supposed to be fun. So all mini prints come with a uh, breakage guarantee, which means uh, you know these things can be delicate, um, and breakable. So obviously if things arrive in the mail uh, broken, which is rare, but does happen, I send you a new one at, uh, at no cost. But also if you are painting them or you drop them or the cat swipes it off the layout, I'm happy to replace it for, for free. The only thing I ask is that if you break it, you pay the postage just so I'm not out of pocket because it's supposed to be fun. Um, I love custom requests, and I'm gonna show you a number of things in a minute that actually uh, were because people asked for them. So everything that I have produced at Mini Prints is either things that I've wanted for my own layout, which is modern day freight, or things that people have said, hey, can you make it for me? Not everything gets made, but I try and make, you know, if there is a good potential <clears throat> uh, for it to sell, uh, and I think that a number of people will be interested in it, then it goes into production. Um, we do tend to be niche. So a lot of what I'm gonna show you uh, in a moment are uh, animals. That's specifically where we started off. Uh, and uh, one of my pet peeves is you see certain animals like birds in nature uh, and they're everywhere and they're you know things that are ubiquitous, but somehow never quite make it to our layouts. So I'm all about super detailing. I'm all about uh, representing what's truly out there uh, on our layouts. And I've tried to sort of come up with things that are a little bit specialized and different. And finally, for this sort of part, I just wanna say that it, it's really for mini prints, the little things that matter the most. So the smaller and the, you know, the more fun, uh, you know, it's those little things that sort of hide in the corners uh, that we really like producing. So before I launch the website and show you a little bit about what we're doing, uh, just a bit of news. Um, 
I mentioned that I haven't turned my layout in the basement on in a while. Uh, and that's because over two years, uh, I've grown the business from being, you know, something that I operate in my basement to uh, getting a commercial space in the Junction Triangle neighborhood of Toronto. Uh, this is an area that is happily a 10 minute walk from my house. Uh, and is surrounded on three sides by rail lines. So I have uh, Via Rail and uh, our Go Metrolinx commuter. Uh, to my east, I have uh, uh, the same to my west, including a high speed uh, rail link to our Metropolitan Airport. And to the north, I have a CP. Uh, mainline, CP Freight Mainline. So um, happily, Mini Prince uh, is in an area where there is lots of rail activity. Uh, and the building that I'm in is actually, you can see it here, the Bodden Machine Company, uh, which is a building, this is a picture from 1913. And you'll notice that there is a Grand Trunk boxcar uh, out front. So there's a really good rail history and a good vibe to the building which is important to me because it makes it fun. One of the things, and you can see here, uh, the building that I'm in, one of the things that I'm able to do is that the landlord allowed me to put up a little rail cam and I'll have a link at the end of the presentation uh, to a 24-7 uh, uh, rail cam that I, I literally have just sort of outside uh, sort of my window. And um, while I don't look directly onto this, it's on the other side of the hallway, um, I'm able to stream live uh, rail action. Uh, so it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to be producing railroad specific uh, details uh, in a building uh, that is, uh, has a good history and, uh, and was rail served. Okay, so on to the good stuff. So miniprints.com, uh, is where I list all of my, uh, my creations. Uh, and I'm going to attempt in a minute to launch it live to show you a few things. Um, there are a number of categories uh, that I wanna draw your attention to. Uh, birds, uh, animals, and the animals are broken down into aquatic animals um, and uh, domestic animals and other things. Uh, people, which is uh, something that I'll focus in on. Um, probably my favorite uh, uh, category are oddities. Uh, those are the fun things, uh, you know, certainly Halloween specific details. And, and I'll just show you like a really, really brief smattering of each of these. Uh, objects, vehicles, uh, a limited edition page where I've, I've done a few fun things uh, and then uh, some sale items. So if you'll bear with me uh, for one minute, I'm going to uh, try and stop sharing the presentation and go to a live view of the website. And if it doesn't work, I will come up with a, a backup plan. Okay, so you guys probably see me for a minute. I'm going to go share screen again. And I'm going to go and share the website. Can you guys see the website now? Is that a yes? Someone yes, wanna... we do. Yes, awesome. Do. Okay, so then this is a live view of the website. And I'll just take you a few, a few just really representative things before closing out the presentation. So if you click on, for example, birds, you will see that there are many different birds from Atlantic puffins to the majestic bald eagle to the ever present Canada geese, which unfortunately are everywhere in all geographies and have their own challenges. Flamingos, ducks, osprey, you name it. For, uh, for April Fools, we did model a prototypical uh, HO scale house fly, which strangely no one has ordered yet, but I am still waiting for that house fly to be ordered. Um, so you get the idea. I mean, I think probably one of our most fun, you know, is the, the little pileated woodpecker just because it's so incredibly small. But bird, birds are really one of the fun areas and they, they're one of our, our, actually our top selling mini print of all times for the animals has been the Canada geese. 
So from birds, we go to animals. Uh, certainly, you know, everything from elephants to bats to the beaver that started it all. Uh, bison, bighorn, I know a lot of uh, narrow gauge model Colorado. So we certainly have, you know, a good representation of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Rocky Mountain and, um, and desert animals. The cow skulls are really fun. You know, just a fun little detail, you know, to add to a, to a layout. Um, for those who model Maine, you know, our crabs and our lobsters go, you know, do very well. The lobsters are ridiculously small um, and a lot of fun. I mentioned people. People is a really fun area. This is the area where I think the business is growing the fastest. And I've started to uh, do some actual 3D scanning uh, of people. So this one that I just, uh, I just crashed my drone uh, after two and a half years of flying as a licensed drone pilot. I just found a tree that didn't like me or I didn't like it. So this is actually a 3D scan of me. Uh, that I, that I was able to do. So, so the three, the live three D scanning uh, of actual, um, you know, prototypical people doing things is is an area that I'm moving into, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I think from a from a sort of historical perspective, probably uh, our, you know, we have everything from golfers to ghosts. Um, I'll come back to this one because there's a fun story about the lumberjacks. Uh, so that that's a really interesting sort of historical figure, and I'm always looking for requests. And I think the other one that that seems to be sort of a, a really popular um, mini print uh, would be our um, our icemen. So uh, people who do sort of you know, icing platforms, and it's it's fun because I figured out a way to print uh, blocks of ice using a, a clear resin. So it's, it's, it's really fun to, to come up with ideas. And all of these really were uh, generated by requests. Uh, so if you have requests of something uh, you know, that's not out there that you'd like to see, uh, by all means, I'm interested. So I'll, I'll just finish off you know, with uh, oddities. Uh, these are the areas where you will find weird and fun things uh, like aliens or you know, skeleton motorcycles or the Loch Ness Monster or the Sasquatch or, you know, skeletons or flying pigs or, you know, things that just sort of, you know, might not be exactly prototypical, but they're still fun. Um, objects is a growing area. And I think one of the best sellers here has to be uh, our railway lanterns. And I was able to create those in H O S and O scale. And these are the ad like uh, Caro lanterns. I have not yet figured out uh, how to get an LED in there, uh, but I know some people are trying to figure that out. Um, the way I was able to print these is I print, printed them in clear resin, uh, and then you just simply go back in and paint the parts that you want to be metal, metal, uh, and it's very effective because they're printed in clear resin. Of course, the, the globe, the glass stays transparent and then you just put a little you know metallic or gray color you know on the little bits that are supposed to be metallic or gray and the effect is is really uh quite outstanding it, it really does work well and and these are little sort of fun challenges that i i enjoy designing and, and working on um and finally uh we do have uh, some vehicles and there are you know more than i can possibly go through and i don't want to take longer than I have here. Uh, but one of our newest ones that we just launched actually on Friday uh, was the Maine Lobster Boat. And there are other Maine Lobster Boats out there, uh, but none that I had the level of detail that I really you know, wanted to see and none that came with fishermen. So I've modeled it with the lobsters, the lobster trap, uh, the lobster fishermen. It comes with you know, details like you know, fenders and life rafts, uh, life preservers, and ship's wheels. And then of course it comes with, you know, all the lobsters and the lobster traps. So uh, that's sort of our most, I guess, kit-like, 
there's no assembly required per se, uh, but there's lots of lots of stuff included. So I'm just going to stop there and I'm going to go back to just finish out the presentation, uh, if that's okay. Um, and I'm going to just share the presentation and we'll finish this off if that, and then open it up for questions, of course. Okay, so um, I'd mentioned the lumberjack and I just wanna come back to that. This was a prototypical picture, hopefully you're seeing that, uh, that someone sent me and asked me if I could create a figure like that. So I think we got pretty close. Uh, so if you have things that you're interested in seeing produced, uh, <coughs> Bernard at miniprints.com. I'm, I'm always interested in ideas. Um, same with the, the figures, the Iceman. Once again, prototypical pictures led to a variety of different poses. Um, I mentioned that I crashed my drone and this is sort of the little uh, figure that, that resulted in it. Um, I talked a bit about the lobster boat and some of the details there. I really want to conclude, I guess, with a couple of thoughts. Um, if you are interested in checking out mini prints, uh, by all means, please miniprints.com. Um, I'm quite active both on Facebook and Instagram, uh, where my handle is miniprints3d. So by all means, if you're on Facebook, feel free to uh, to follow. I tend to post uh, a lot of what's new there, uh, specifically on Facebook. I just started uh, a YouTube channel uh, where I'm starting to uh, post videos. Uh, and that's where if you are interested in uh, checking out the rail cam, uh, if you search mini prints on YouTube, uh, you will get to the live uh, mini prints um, webcam, rail cam, uh, out my window. Um, I'm about to send out an email newsletter probably tomorrow. It goes out once a month and it usually goes out with, uh, you know, new things, fun items, discount code, sale information, you know, things like that. Uh, there'll be a big meetup that we're having with DJ of DJ's Trains uh, in Tilsonburg, Ontario at Otter Valley Railroad. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're interested in sort of what's new in the mini world, um, you can sign up for the email newsletter uh, on uh, both Facebook or uh, preferably miniprints.com. And I promised you at the end a, uh, a discount code. So if anything here strikes your fancy with an asterisk, some things, uh, the newest things, uh, are not 15% off. So I, I didn't put the lobster boats on at 15% off just because they're new. But pretty much everything else here that you saw, uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, is available. And if you enter the code NNG15, uh, you will receive 15% off. And I believe I made that code valid until midnight of Friday. So you've got the week uh, to go shopping at miniprints.com if that is of interest. So I will stop my sharing. I will say thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to share a little bit about my wacky mini world and uh, happy to answer any questions or address any comments. Um, the prints you showed were built horizontally. Do you uh, tilt the orientation of any of your prints? Absolutely. So every print is unique and every print uh, requires a little bit of R&D to see how they will print properly. So it's, it's, it's really can be easy to design things and really difficult to print them. So I, it's kind of akin to the architect who designs a beautiful glass house and then they give the plans to the builder and the builder says it's stunning, but there's no way this thing will stand. So every individual 3D printed object requires a little bit of trial and error to figure out what the best optimized orientation is, both in terms of, you know, 45 degree angle, you know, 90 degree angle, whatever. Uh, but not only that, but the, the number of supports. When a print is printed, here, let me get my little, I made a little black box I could show you. It has a ton of supports on it. So there's, for example, a little tractor. And when it comes off the printer, you know, in this case, I was able to print it 
uh, horizontal, you know, sort of parallel to the plate. Uh, and it's just, you know, trial and error. Um, you know, there are all these little supports on it, you know, that, that then need to be removed before I can send it out the door. Uh, so every model is unique uh, and is, you know, really determined by trial and error. Not only trial and error, but also um, timing. So it might take, and I don't want to go too deep into it because I know this is not a, a two hours on 3D printing, but the advantage to print something this way is that it might take, you know, an hour or two to print. However, if you tilt it up on a 45 degree angle, whoops, you know, like that, you know, then it might take double as long to print because the higher the object is, the more layers it is, the longer it takes to print. So you're always fighting between how many supports, how easy is it to remove the supports? Less supports makes it easy to post-process. However, you're more prone to failures. 45 degree angles yield superior prints sometimes, but they can take double as long to print. So there are a number of variables that you're always sort of balancing to get the perfect print. Uh, Bernard, uh, Larry McDonald here, a fellow Torontonian. Hello. In your lobster boat. Uh, what yes. is the length? What what design was it copied from and what length is she? Uh, 32 foot and it's a 32 foot. It's an exact replica of a 32 foot. Uh, I'm blanking out on it. Um, if you type Maine lobster boat, it's like the most popular Maine manufacturer. So she's from Maine. Okay. Yeah, she's a, a 32 foot main lobster boat, okay. and I could probably pull it up and have it to you in a minute, but um, I didn't put the name brand on the listing just because it's a current manufacturer, and I don't want to get sued, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of the prototypical main lobster boat, and I can, if you email me at bernard at miniprints.com, I'll, I'll give you the name of it, but it's, uh, it's pretty darn accurate. Very good, thank you. Is yeah. there any, without tipping your hat, can you say, is there anything more in objects coming down the road that might be uh, uh, particularly of interest to Canadian modelers? Oh, always, nonstop. I mean, yeah, there's so much. I mean, well, what, I mean, one that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about is this wicked grain auger that's being designed by uh, a guy in Iowa. Scott Thornton put me in touch with uh, a really talented 3D designer in Iowa who has done just the most beautiful prototypical uh, sort of portable grain auger. Uh, so, I mean, you know, anybody who has, I mean, it's kind of an industry in a single model, right? Because anybody who's got, you know, a rail line, a bit of pavement, you know, and a place a truck to pull up can now model, you know, with this portable auger. So there's always new stuff. I mean, I try and list new items every Friday. So, uh, and the other thing too is I'll throw that question back to you and say, what do you want, Larry? I mean, you know, I'm open to, you know, if there is something and the rule has to be that it doesn't exist or a good copy doesn't exist. I don't want to just recreate what's already out there. But if there is a desire and a demand for something, you know, and, you know, someone's got some drawings or some plans or some pictures, uh, yeah, I'm interested. The auger sounds like a, a modern implement used. To... It is. Yeah, the auger is, is modern. So um, uh, the Oliver 77 uh, is, is historic. Um, but, you know, because I model modern day and because there was a hole in the modern day, you know, some of my models go that route, but there's certainly a lot. I mean, certainly things like the animals, you know, they're, they're not era specific. Uh, and I'm open to, you know, some of the figures, you know, are not era specific, uh, but I'm certainly open to, you know, historical details like the, the railway lanterns. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Bernard. Uh, I won't take up all the airtime here. So no problem. I'll probably be talking to you. Like I say, I'm a fellow Torontonian. Yeah, well, stop by Miniature Printerland. Come by for a visit. Yeah, Dave beat me to it, but anyway. <laughs> okay, thank <laughs> okay. you. Okay, uh, thank you, Bernard. And, You're very uh, welcome. 